A beautiful September morning in Oxford, Mississippi. Folks got an early start in the Grove ahead of this one between number 23 Cal and Ole Miss. The Rebels hosting a Pac-12 team for the first time in history. And the Ole Miss Rebels, they lost their opener to Memphis, just 173 yards of offense in that game. The offense has been a lot better the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Scotty Phillips, Matt Carell, the reason why they've been better. They handed it off to Scotty Phillips more than any other running back in the country. Matt Carell has only turned the ball over once through the air. They're going to expect the exact same thing today against a very tough Cal defense. Big year for Matt Luke in his third season, and it's the first year he's coaching without a bowl ban and his full complement of scholarships. Yeah, this football team has been looking for this. There's not an excuse. What comes with that is a lot of expectation as well. The weather is not oppressively hot today, so that's good for Cal. Some people were thinking that would be another disadvantage for the Bears. Cal won the toss, elected to defer, so we're going to see Ole Miss on the field offensively first. And Matt Corral, the redshirt freshman, from Ventura, California. He is the only scholarship player from the state of California on this Ole Miss roster. High school All-American. Played in four games last year as the backup to Jordan Te'amu without burning his red shirt, and he's the guy this year. Yeah, this, this quarterback room is full of only freshman clay, right? A red shirt freshman and Matt Corral to start, and two other true freshmen. He needs to play well, he needs to play within himself, but make quick, fast decisions in this Rich Rod offense. From the 25, Ole Miss going to work, and they're going to try and throw. At least Corral looked like he was going to throw, and then he steps ahead for a couple of yards. And guess who's there? And that's Evan Weaver. He's, this... got, he's got stick him on his hands, right? We watched that all week long. Anything he touches, he brings to the ground. On second down and eight, they're going to swing it out to the far side. It's a good catch and run for Scotty Phillips. 71 rushing attempts through the first three weeks, but his first touch today is a receive, is a reception and a first down. Yeah, utilizing him in any manner they can outside on the perimeter. Missed tackle by, missed tra tackle by Travion Beck allows him to get up the field for a first down. And now Corral sprints out, throws it on the run, hits Jonathan Mingo. Great catch. And the good-looking true freshman gets it into Cal territory for the first time. Jonathan Mingo is making like he's blocking here, right? And allows for Corral to throw what is essentially a triple option play. And this is just the third option in the play. He gets behind the defense. And now here's Phillips. He's coming off back-to-back 100-yard games. Brought down by Travion Beck. This Cal defense under coordinator Tim DeRuiter, former Fresno State head coach. On its heels a little bit here early on the first series for Ole Miss. On the run, and Corral was running for his life, and he throws it incomplete. Elijah Moore, the closest receiver. You know, the more film we watched this week of Corral, Wearing that number two kind of reminded me a little bit of Johnny Manziel, especially with the different arm angles and awkward throwing positions he does make. And the coaches talked about it. They said he made some throws in practice that they just, they can't believe. And Rich Rodriguez describes him as a work in progress, but he's got a high ceiling. Third down. They need the 23-yard line for a first down. And it's not going to come here. And there's Beckett. Luke Beckett, the best defensive lineman, wreaking havoc up front, and it's fourth down. So Luke Logan will come out to attempt the field goal. Junior from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, four for six on the year. He has hit everything from inside 35 this year, but this is a 46-yard attempt. This would be a career long. And no good. So Ole Miss comes up empty on the opening drive. I'll tell you what, this defense, even though they gave up a bunch of yards on that first drive, getting away with no points there, they are uh, a symbol of this football team. Bend, bend, and don't break allows for the offense 
to try to make something happen and keep them in football games. A lot of injuries on that defensive uh, linebacker position. They're going to play a lot of nickel. Travion Beck, you're going to see a ton of on that defensive side of the football. Yeah, and for more on those injuries, let's go down to Taylor Davis. Yeah, guys, some definitely unfortunate news for this Cal defense. They could be without four linebackers today. Chinadu Udagu did not make the trip. Ben Hawk Schreider is ruled out, and Cameron Good and Tevin Paul are considered questionable. Both of these guys did warm up before the game, but coaches tell me they're just banged up. It might not be the best for them to go, and that's a lot of experience on this field as well could certainly make an impact yeah, defense brought 10 starters back uh, but it's nicked up right now yeah it is they hey we talked to coach yesterday and he just simply said hey we're gonna we're gonna scheme it and we're gonna do what we have to we have the leaders in place so after the Marcel Dancy gain of a couple of yards they're gonna throw for the first time to Keikoa Crawford the transfer from Michigan picks up the first first down of the day for Cal as we look at Chase Garbers, the sophomore out of Newport Beach. And the stats don't jump off the page, but he is 9-4 and four as Cal's starter going back to last year. What he's done in practice is just, has just... Crawford with another catch to the 40-yard line. And quickly, Cal is moving the ball. This is what offensive coordinator Bull Baldwin wants to see from Garbers. Yeah, he does. He puts this ball right on the money. Crawford goes up and extends himself and makes a great catch getting the first down. Moving with tempo after that 17-yard gain, it's Marcel Dancy. He's been a nice compliment to Christopher Brown, the number one running back for the Bears, to gain a three. And you see Garber's numbers, not a dynamic passer. He only completed nine passes last week. Coach is saying you know, he needs to play like he practices. He's already hit on his first three attempts. And now here's Remigio getting involved in the offense. Nico Remigio, the sophomore receiver. And they'll move the chains again. Yeah, offensively doing what he's doing, taking what they give him just like that. That's what we've been wanting to see out of Chase Garbers all season long. If he continues to make plays like that and just hits the open receiver, this offense will move up and down the football field. From the 22. Garbers from a clean pocket thrown toward the end zone and he overshot his receiver. Romigio had his man beat by a step and it's incomplete. I don't necessarily mind him taking a shot like that, especially when you're one on one. But you had the guy underneath coming into the end zone that may have been a, a, a not in the end zone, but more down the football field that may have been a better option. I'm not going to ever fault somebody for taking one on one shots down the football field. This offense ranked at the bottom of the Pac-12 last year, Ryan. The results have been mixed this season, but so far today, it's definitely moving with some momentum. Second down and 10. they are going to give it to Christopher Brown for the first time. Bruising running back. And he'll go ahead for a couple. The second leading rusher in the Pac-12 at 108 yards per game. Yeah, it was a question mark going into this season, how they were going to replace Patrick Laird. Christopher Brown shows up in week one against UC Davis, runs almost for 200 yards. He's been the answer at running back for this football team. This is the first third down that Cal is facing on this drive, and here comes the crowd trying to get behind this Ole Miss defense. Eighth play of the series. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Garbers moves out of the pocket, throws on the run, and it is caught at the 10-yard line. Christopher Brown coming back for the catch. First down, Cal. When you line up in five wide, especially with the running back in play, he becomes a receiver for you, and he does a great job of coming back down his stem Chase Garbers getting outside, putting the money, putting the ball on the money for a big first down. They've been bad play on third down this year. 118th out of 130 teams. Big conversion there. It gets them into the red zone. You can see Garbers' ability out of the pocket. Move to get free for a good pass. And now here's Brown with the run. And he'll take it to the six. That is the kind of play that Cal has been missing from the starting quarterback. We've seen it in bursts and in flashes, right? They say they see it constantly in practice. We saw it happen at the end of the Washington game. 
that got them in field goal range to win the football game. We need to see more of it and down here in SEC country. Big time play on third down. So Mike McIntyre's defense. Trying to make a stand here. Garber's play action, lobs it to the end zone, wide open. Trayvon Clark, touchdown Bears. An impressive opening series for Cal. This is a perfect example of down in the goal line area where they run crossers. Defensive, defensive players get confused in a wide open Trayvon Clark. Chase Garber's good job in the play action. Finds it for six. Garber six for seven passing on that series. Greg Thomas, the left-footed senior kicker, comes on for the point after. And it's seven to nothing, Bears. Ten plays, 70 yards. And a six-yard touchdown pass. Garbers to Clark has Cal leading here in Oxford. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. It's 7-0 Cal. Each team with a possession. A missed field goal for the Rebels. Touchdown drive for Cal, and it was an impressive one. Big third down conversion by the quarterback, Chase Garbers. Something that he's been struggling with. Came up big on that series. First downs will gain, gain you tempo, Clay, and that's sure what happened that, on, on that drive. Ole Miss will have it at the 25 for the second time. Let's see who's slinging it. Brought to you by Sling TV. There's Chase Garbers. Pretty special early on for him. In a big for the Cal quarterback. This play right, right puts it exactly where he needs to put it and then easily finds Trayvon Clark for the six to put the Cal Bears up. 9 a.m., <laughs> what are you talking about, people? Mike McIntyre, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, said, hey, we've got to shut down the scramble plays for Garbers to have success today. Well, he burned him on that opening series. On the slant, there's Elijah Moore with a catch. And a first down for Ole Miss, who also moved the ball pretty well on their first series, but they came up empty. They did. They, they didn't get the points. Uh, that's big. Elijah Moore is going to be a big reason why this offense continues to move up and down the football field today. Play action for Matt Corral. Throws to the outside. The comebacker Drummond. The J.C. transfer from East Mississippi. And quickly Ole Miss out to midfield. Another first down for the Rebels. You know, when you have, when you have players down because of injury, sometimes they're going to move the football on you. But if you can button up when you get down near the red zone and limit them to points, such as field goals, that's going to be a win for Cal today. Here's Phillips on the left side. He'll cut it up for a few. It's a young wide receiver core for Ole Miss, but they did get Braylon Sanders back today. Number 13. We'll see if he makes an impact for Ole Miss. And as Elijah Moore goes in motion, it'll be Phillips again on the run. And he'll dive over the 45, down to the 43-yard line. Phillips ran for over 900 yards and 12 touchdowns last year. He has been great since coming to Oxford from Jones County, J.C. He lines up wide right. Empty backfield. Corral. Complete again to the 35-yard line. That catch by Sanders. So he makes a contribution. Good to see him back on the field. He hasn't been out there since suffering that hammy week one against Memphis. Yeah, he's going to be limited. It's all about conditioning with him today, but one of the one of the guys that, that Matt Corral trusts most, most of all. Corral rolling out. And that was good defense that time by Cameron Bynum. The shutdown corner, he immediately... 
hit more as we go down to Taylor Davis. Yeah, guys, before, take, before taking the field, I saw Matt Corral go up to all of his linemen and say, hey, they did it first, but it's our turn. Play hard. He was encouraging each and every one of his O-linemen. This young quarterback brings a fire to this Ole Miss team. He's a California native, too. This is a special game for him as he takes off for the first down and more. Down to the 11-yard line. When Rich, when Rich Rod's offenses have been as dynamic as they have at West Virginia with Pat White, at Arizona with Khalil Tate, they had a mobile quarterback that can not only throw but run like that. Perfect example of what he needs at the quarterback position to be successful. Jerrion Ely, the star, true freshman running back, checks into the right of Corral. And he'll get it. Ely was amazing last week. Set an Ole Miss freshman record, 273 all-purpose yards. Rich Rodriguez, the new offensive coordinator. He steps into a room, and it, there's a confidence in what he's been able to do offensively over his career. He, he knows it. Corral fakes the handoff to Ely, hits his tight end. Cooley dives for the pylon. Did he get in? Uh, they're going to mark him short. Octavius Cooley. The Rebels have two senior tight ends. They use him quite a bit. Great job of misdirection. Get him the football. Wow. That might, they might get a second look at that. Can't quite tell if his foot is on the line there. But he extends. If his foot's in bounds, he extends for the touchdown. And now Matt Luke is going to call a timeout. And Matt Luke is talking to the official, Mike McCabe, saying, hey, you, know, you guys may want to take another look at this. Mississippi. This is a 30-second timeout. So the Rebels right on the doorstep looking for the equalizer here on this beautiful Saturday in Oxford. 7-0 Cal back in a moment. The All-State is presented by All-State, reminding you that football season is... Seven nothing Cal, the number 23 team in the country. Ole Miss knocking on the door here as Mike McCabe, our referee, is going to take another look at this. It uh, it appeared that Octavius Cooley stepped out of bounds before diving to the pylon. Yeah, his 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 foot seems to step on the out of bounds line before he leaps and crosses the goal line it should be uh we should be third and goal here for the rebels good effort replay official is dave lambros my question clay is why did it take so long for them to decide to review it not sure Pretty easy call, I do believe here. After review, the ruling of the runner being short of the goal line stands as called. Pretty impressive drive up to this point. Nine plays, 73 yards in just over three minutes. And now... Prior to the head coach calling timeout. So no timeout charge to Ole Miss. Third down. And short, Scotty Phillips in the backfield. And we're waiting to get set. Now we are. Corral hands off. Phillips lunging toward the goal line, and he's going to be stopped just short. Evan Weaver in on another tackle, the square-jawed senior linebacker for Cal. It is a first down. Now Ole Miss gets four cracks at it. Corral on the keeper, and he just walks in. Touchdown, Ole Miss. 
good response by the Rebels. And when you run that type of play on the goal line, Clay, zone read, it's important that the coach says either keep or give. Take away the confusion of a fumble happening there. Happening there. He pulls it, walks into the end zone untouched. There's Luke Logan who missed that field goal attempt. But he's good on the PAT and we're tied up. 11 plays, 75 yards. Matt Corral, quarterback from California, calls his own number, walks in for six. Welcome back to Oxford. 7-7 our score, Matt Corral. Was five for five on that drive. 33 yards passing, and he had a rushing touchdown, his first of the year. So far, what we thought was going to be a defensive game, none of the defense has been able to stop from at least attempting points so far. Now, later this evening, we're going to have Oklahoma State, number 12, Texas from Austin. The Cowboys come into this one having beaten the Longhorns the last four years. And the last win for Texas against the Pokes in Austin was 2008, 730 Eastern. Our Saturday night football game presented by Wells Fargo. Oklahoma State is the nation's leading rusher, rusher Chuba Hubbard. And the nation's top receiver in Tylen Wallace. They're combining right now for 304 yards per game. It's pretty impressive. Coach Gundy, year in, year out, just keeps rebuilding, keeps rebuilding, re-upping, however you want to look at it, and has been a problem for the Texas Longhorns. So Cal gets it back, starting from the 25. Garbers will run, and he takes a shot on that right side. Garbers pretty good on his feet last week against North Texas. He ran 18 times for 70 yards. I don't know about that. I mean, that he goes down feet first. Smith goes right at his head. Pac-12 officials today on the football field. And Keydron Smith, sophomore from West Palm Beach with that tackle. Garbers complete to the 33. That's going to be another Cal first down. And there's Jordan Duncan, the senior. He's getting a big thrill today. He's back in his home state, the Hattiesburg native. Yeah, it's pretty special for him and his family. Coached by Brett Favre. Long time, of course, Hall of Fame football player with the Green Bay Packers. And Favre did some coaching at Oak Grove High School. That's where he came from. His Garber is on a sprint out. He's going to take it out at the 43-yard line. The difference about the difference of what Coach McIntyre was talking about was when he would drop back to pass and then scramble, limiting that. Those types of plays are called. It's zone read. He's reading what the defensive end's doing, getting up the football field for positive yardage. On second down, some pressure coming, and Garbers is thrown down for a big loss. And that land shark defense. Led by Tyrikus Tisdale with the first sack of the day. This offensive line is kind of patched up. Haven't really seen too much pressure on him as of yet. Tisdale gets in there, gets an arm on him, is able to pull him down and set up a long third down. Third down and 15. A team that has struggled this year on third down. And that is going to be incomplete. Jordan Duncan trying to convince the officials that he made that catch. He did not. So it's fourth down, and Cal will have to punt. Big play by that Ole Miss defensive line on the sack by Tisdale. Yeah, that really, that really set this up to make it third and long, and it, it's so difficult to convert Clay on third and 15, especially when you got guys that are just rearing back and coming after the quarterback. Stephen Coots, senior from Australia, he's been a little dinged up. Hasn't punted a lot the last few weeks. Gets this one off. Elijah Moore calls for the fair catch, and Ole Miss will have it 
just across the 30-yard line. Fansville College Football Update. Some pretty good games last night. This brought to us by Dr. Pepper. And bad news for the Pac-12 as Utah maybe the last best hope to get into the college football playoff from the Pac-12 to the loss to USC. USC using the third-string quarterback. Boise State holding off Air Force. They could be the group of five New Year's Six representative this year. The win over Florida State in the opening week really establishes them for that opportunity, yes. And that was a tough loss for the Pac-12 last night when Utah goes down. And Washington State... They've got a tough schedule going forward, that's for sure. Washington State becomes the front runner in the Pac-12 right now. One of three undefeated teams, Cal playing right here. They have become the front runner for that conversation. Matt Corral on the carry. He's going to pick up six yards on first down. Oh, Matt Corral is a good ad-lib quarterback. Awkward thrower, but accurate. Can throw on the move. Really wanted to establish something here and come to Ole Miss. And it's this talented veteran defense. He's going to get it to Drummond, and it's going to be close to another Ole Miss first down. You know, we talked about Rich Rod and his young quarterback. That, you know, Corral needs to find the consistency. He's been look very consistent today, Clay. Very poised. He's going to keep it here. Good fake, and he takes it out to the 50-yard line for a first down. Like we said, he can, he can add lib, but that may have been a designed run. Well, it, it's his own read, and you put Ashton Davis in a difficult situation right there, but Matt Carell and his athleticism gets outside the speedster and gets another first down. First down and 10 from the 50. Ely in the backfield. Another quick throw. That time it's incomplete. It was a forward pass. Intended for Octavius Cooley. Sometimes they'll play that awkward throwing motion. Some instances you just have to be fundamentally sound. Set your feet. Throw the ball accurately. There is an, op uh, an opportunity to do that. He wasn't rushed. He just wanted to get the ball out quickly. And because he wasn't accurate, it falls incomplete and sets up a second and long. Corral throws complete to Marcus Gregory. Redshirt freshman from Duncan, South Carolina. And he gets it all the way down to the 28-yard line. This is a situation where they kick down a safety, take it to three high, and he just runs right down the seam, and, and Corral puts it right on the money. Ole Miss with an impressive drive on their... Last possession, moving it again. Here's Elijah Moore. And he's going to be down at the 22. There is a penalty flag down. We haven't seen any flags yet today. Well, we saw a lot of them last night. Uh, USC and, and, and Utah. And a lot of this. Offense number three. 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. A lot of this on perimeter screens, holding, blocks in the back, illegal plays by the wide receivers in the blocking aspect of things. Very similar there. It's You practice it a ton, but sometimes when the defensive player is, is blocking, he doesn't feel the receiver coming up his back, and that's where a lot of fouls are called by the officials. First penalty of the game. Ole Miss had 11 in the first three games combined, the fewest in the SEC. Twin receivers to either side, but they're going to run it with Ely. He lowers his head, sneaks through a hole up the middle. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Ely, who's going to be involved a lot more as the season goes on. Here's Evan Weaver. We talked about him all at the beginning. He's right there, always to meet the guy in the hole. He kind of takes the brunt of it there, but gets him on the ground and sets up a long second down. 159 tackles last year, more than any returning player in the FBS. Throw to the sideline. That is going to be a catch for Ely, who's also a very good receiver. And that is going to be just short of the first down yardage needed. No, nope, they got it. They're going to move the chains. First down, Ole Miss. Coach has talked about his ability to catch the football by playing him in the slot. Here they put him on the outside. 
He gets the catch, gets a foot tap. Corral steps out of the tackle at the 20, stays on his feet, and spins inside the 15. Braxton Croto, who's getting the start today because of that bruised up linebacking core, makes the stop, but it's an impressive run for Corral against a very good Cal defense, which has kept the last 10 opponents to 24 points or less. That's a great streak, right? In this day and age when the offenses are putting up a ton of points, being able to do that is huge as a defense. Straight up the middle for Ely and another tackle for Evan Weaver. I will say this. This is going to take a toll on a defense if they're out there this long, this many plays when you're talking about getting to the fourth quarter down here in the deep south. That's something we've got to keep an eye on, Clay. How many defensive snaps this defense is going to be going with. That will be the end of the first quarter not, yeah. qu not quite what we expected but fun nonetheless 11 plays on the last series for Ole Miss 10 plays and counting on this current series and we are tied at seven after one 12 CC here in back in a moment Is there any way? A couple of young coaches, Justin Wilcox, Matt Luke, both in their third year. And we've got a tie game as we start the second quarter. An impressive first quarter for both offenses at points, and especially Ole Miss with 187 yards in the first quarter. I think more impressive is this Ole Miss offense. It's the third consecutive drive they've put themselves in a position to score points. And we've got a third down situation here. Third down and four. In the red zone, Matt Corral sprinting out, and he's going to throw incomplete. I, some miscommunication there. Evan Weaver was bearing down, got some pressure, and Cal is going to force a second field goal attempt for Ole Miss. Yeah, with the limitations on, on defense, the fact that they're, they've, they've stopped them to another field goal attempt I think is huge. I mean, if I'm a quarterback, too, there, Clay, and I have Evan Weaver bearing down on me, I'm probably going to get rid of that ball a lot quicker than I wanted to. Luke Logan missed a 47-yarder in the first quarter. This will be a little easier from 29. He has hit everything from inside 35 this year. This is good. And Logan puts Ole Miss in front for the first time. I would probably say this is a win. Ole Miss takes the lead 10-7. Matt Luke's Rebels move in front, 10 to 7 after the field goal drive. Well, this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, all state will contribute to the university's general scholarship fund. We say thank you to all state. 12 plays, 57 yards, and a Luke Logan 29 yard field goal. That's the difference in the game right now. You've got to be impressed with, with what Ole Miss has been able to do offensively, especially. The extended drives. Their catch called for. And Cal will take it out to the 25. Ashton Davis calling for that fair catch. Well, Ole Miss has two big-time coordinators that are new on the staff this year. Rich Rodriguez running the offense. Mike McIntyre, the defense. Yeah, two coaches, we said earlier, were both Pac-12 coaches of the year within the last five seasons. Big statement by Matt Luke bringing these two guys in here to lead the offense and defense accordingly. McIntyre changing the system up. Introducing a 3-4 defense for Ole Miss. As Christopher Brown gets the carry, not much operating room there. They are playing faster, according to McIntyre. Still not, not the land sharks of old, but it is getting better. Though they do have 27 tackles for loss this season already that's best in the SEC nine a game that tells us a lot about their willingness to go and attack the football hopefully they'll get a turnover here and everybody will get to see the land shark chain that we've heard so highly about Mike McIntyre on the left of your screen there he was on David Cutcliffe's staff with Matt Luke here at Ole Miss and at Duke that's how they got to know each other real well Garbers patting the ball, gets rid of it. Complete to Crawford, the Michigan transfer. 
Nice catch and run for a Cal first down. Yeah, we just haven't seen this from Chase Garbers. And a tremendous job of sitting in the pocket, waiting for his wide receiver to come open and put it on the money. He had a big catch against Washington that set up that game-winning field goal in Seattle a couple of weeks ago. A game that was delayed by lightning that didn't get over until the wee hours of the morning out west. First down and 10. Garber is to the flat. That is caught by Marcel Dancer. Tries to get behind a block and runs to the 41-yard line. It's going to be second down. Jalen Julius escorting him out from his free safety position. You talked to me all week about how first down was going to be an important down. Yeah. And, and we're seeing it for both offenses so far, right? They're getting big, big chunks on first down to keep these drives extended and going. Cal was an air raid offense under Sonny Dykes. Now they're running it 67% of the time. We'll see what Bo Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, draws up here. Two tight ends to the right. They are going to run it. And a stumbling run for a first down by Marcel Dancy. He had contact early in that carry, but kept his momentum going forward. Yeah, you talk about all the time thunder and lightning and running back. They have exactly that here. Darcy's more, Dancy's more of a guy that can get up the football field and be more explosive. Great job of making yards after contact there to get the first down. Just like we talked about, keep moving those chains, extend those drives, make the defense do more work than they want to. Dancy will stay in the backfield. First down from midfield. Chase Garbers, plenty of time, now running out of time. To the left, throws it deep. Little underthrown contact in the secondary, and there comes a flag. Keydron Smith. Gonna be called for pass interference, most likely. Sometimes when you're a quarterback in defense, number 20. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Mackay Polk, the true freshman receiver, and Keydron Smith mugged him. Yeah, sometimes when you're a quarterback and, and you're kind of outside the pocket, you throw it up to a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and if you underthrow him, you put the defensive player in a difficult situation, not knowing where the football is. So a big break there for Cal as they have it now first down and 10 from the 35. Send a man in motion. It's Polk. And go back to the ground with Brown. Brown has worked so hard to prove he is an every down back. He has carried it a lot for Cal. There's a first down carry that again... Get some a decent chunk. Three yards isn't bad on first no, down I, for this team. You know, anywhere around three or four yards, you put yourself in a position to be second and six. That's that's going to be so beneficial to a quarterback that has struggled a bit this season and not put him in a difficult situation when you're third down. Team that really struggled with O-line push first few weeks at times. Plenty of time to throw here for Garbers. And he throws it out of the end zone intended for Duncan. Well covered in the secondary. And Garbers was running out of time. We talked about that O-line for Cal Ryan. Racked with injuries. Jenna Williams and Will Craig out for the year. Valentino Daltoso, he's out today. So it has not been a healthy group up front. And in saying that, you would expect probably a little bit of a conservative play call here. Being in a reasonable no long field goal opportunity if they don't get the first down. Full start, Cal, movement on that left side. And we were talking about that O-line. Bazakis moving into a starting role this week. He moved early. False start, offense, number 85. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Zach has moved, and so did Jake Tonjes, the tight end, and he's the one they caught. Now maybe they're going to have to take a little more of a risk, right? If they don't get the first down, they have to at least get it somewhere near where they can kick a, a reasonable field goal here. Greg Thomas's career long is 47. He had some work to do here on third and long. 
Man open, caught, and out of bounds is Jeremiah Hawkins, the five foot eight junior receiver. First down, Cal at the 14 yard line. You know, the impressive thing about this is, is that they got man to man coverage, and you go one on one, and Jeremiah Hawkins just beats him to the corner and perfectly plays football by Chase Garbers to get him a big first down. And now Dancy is wrapped up quickly by that front. And that's going to be no gain, maybe even a loss. Benito Jones, the big anchor at nose tackle, made that stop second down. I mean, you got to be impressed with both of these quarterbacks today. Extending drives on third down, making big plays so far. It's a game we didn't expect to be offensively impressed right. by, but instead, these quarterbacks are putting on a show here in Oxford. Chase Garber's excited to be playing in the SEC this week. He told us that yesterday. Garber's suppression right up the middle, spins out of a sack. Garbers will flip it out of bounds, and it'll be incomplete. What an escape job by Chase Garbers. Sindra gets beat bad at the point of attack, There's and no foul Garbers does. Rounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket and threw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. And does a tremendous job of, of evading the, the rusher and getting the ball past the line of scrimmage so they don't lose a bunch of yards. Ryder Anderson, the defensive end, seemingly had Garbers in control, but he lost it. So here's another third down. Cal two for three on third down today. Christopher Brown out of the backfield. The catch and a touchdown. Chris Brown, his first receiving touchdown of the year. And Cal with a great response. Great response here. And they're seeing the numbers, right? They see the, the advantage they have. Chase Garber takes the three steps. Sees he has leverage. Christopher Brown does on the outside. Gets him to the ball. Gets him the ball. Moving forward. Steps in for the big touchdown to take the lead. And Thomas adds the point after. And number 23, Cal, goes back in front. Cal makes the trip down south. Nothing's going to get in their way right now. Both quarterbacks dealing. Chase Garbers takes the advantage. And the Bears go up 10 to 4. Bears go up 14-10. The All-State Saturday kickoff is brought to you by Twix. It's time to decide. A lot of fun in the Grove. Every Saturday home game here in Oxford. And some of the Cal folks who made the trip from the West enjoying the Grove as well. Well, the Southern hospitality. You know, that's the biggest takeaway I have every time I come down here. Well... Some scoring drives. We've seen a lot of offense here today. Both offenses moving pretty quickly. No scoring drive, and we've had four. Has been longer than four minutes and nine seconds. Both, both, both coordinators talked about the tempo part of offense. Let's go down to Taylor Davis. Frustration for this Cal defense on the sideline. There seems to be some communication issues on the field from the shift at the linebacker position. They're very bothered by what they're allowing Ole Miss to do in the passing game. Coaches coming up to them and reiterating, hey, calm down, make the adjustments. Schematically, this Cal defense was going to be up against it, losing their best players. Like Taylor just talked about. Now we get a whistle. Both teams are still involved in the substitution process. And the play clock was inevitably interrupted. So both teams were still uh, shuffling players in and off the field. Yeah, anytime the offense is moving somebody in, or especially when the series just starts, you got to give both teams the opportunity to get set for ready to play. Matt Corral is going to swing it out to Jerry and Ely, who takes a bump in the backfield. Eludes a tackle and gets ahead close to the 30-yard line. Yeah, that's the second time we've seen a safety go up and try to make a big play and miss the tackle, allowing a guy like Ely to 
to get some positive yards in it. That's going to be frustrating for, for some of those defensive players, especially with those tackle for loss opportunities. Second down, we'll call it six. Corral, complete again. Ely, first down and more to the 45. You can see why the fans here at Ole Miss are so excited about him, Ryan. Multi-sport athlete. Alabama Clemson wanted him. And he was drafted in June by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Great baseball player, too. And that time, Ely can't make the catch. He dives on it if it was a backwards pass. Man, they're going to mark this at the 40. That's going to be a loss on the play for Ole Miss. And Ely was smart to make sure he dove on the ball. Yeah, it's... It's huge. It's a huge job by Ely here. But if you watch the quarterback, Carroll, watch how he's just he doesn't set his feet to throw necessarily. He's still kind of moving backwards. Isn't accurate. Good job by Ely of realizing it was a behind the behind the scrimmage pass. He's Corral going ahead. He'll get a handful back. So it's a third down and long for Ole Miss as Evan Weaver is involved in yet another tackle for the Bears defense. With the loss of the two linebackers, Evan Weaver may may be in the 30 tackle range when this yeah. is all said and done. And you got Nick Alfton, Ben Moose out there playing linebacker. They were tight ends as of last week. And we got another penalty flag down. Full start, offense number 11, five yard penalty, still third down. Already the third penalty against the Rebels. Yeah, the tempo part of things, right? When that gets interrupted, things like this start to take place yep. and problems ensue. So now third and 18. They need the 44-yard line of Cal for a first down. Corral. Make a short conservative pass to Elijah Moore, a true sophomore who's been their go to wide receiver. Now bring up fourth down. Coin Dang made that tackle. Yeah, that was a that was a great tackle in open space against a very athletic receiver from a from a six foot six inch linebacker, the number one JUCO recruit out of Independence Community College. Did a great job of stopping them. Setting up a, a big fourth down and a punt. You don't see a lot of 6'6 six, six inside linebackers. No, you don't. You don't see a lot of 6'6 six, six linebackers, period. Mac Brown with this punt. It's his first of the day. And Remigio is going to let it bounce out of bounds. This is going to be good for Ole Miss as they pin Cal deep. Now kick off your week three NFL Sunday with the countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app at 10 a.m. Eastern. Patrick Mahomes breaks down the art of the no-look pass, plus an exclusive look at Deshaun Watson's off-season trip around the world and all the early breaking stories, injury updates, you got Moss, and much, much more. Of course, the big news this week, Antonio Brown released by the Patriots. Yeah, we talked about it a week ago, whether he should have played on Sunday or not. Clearly, it, it, it didn't matter. Uh, his actions and lack of personal accountability is put this into motion and he's no longer a part of an NFL football team and I don't know if he'll get an opportunity ever again and a lot of people that hope not we'll see Christopher Brown running back for Cal takes it straight ahead and get a couple so Cal on its last series went 10 plays 75 yards in four minutes and nine seconds Big and stop by the defense. First time today for that defense to get them off the football field because we talked about how many snaps they had already taken so far. Second down. Boy, Ole Miss was ready for Brown that time. Three or four red shirts there. Against the run, Ole Miss, the last couple of weeks has been outstanding. Held both Arkansas and southeastern Louisiana under 70 yards. And now they're going to put Cal in a third and long situation. Yeah, coming into this football game, you and I had been studying hard and long on these defenses because they've been the, they've been the most impressive for both teams. Marcel Dancy 
to the left of Chase Garbers. And a three receiver set. Pressure picked up. Garbers floats it down the sideline. Contact again and another penalty flag. Keydron Smith was called for a penalty back in the first quarter. He may have been dinged again. Pass for Ferris. Defense on the 20. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. There's a lot of contact there, Clay, right? He does get his head flipped around, but I, I mean, if you're a defender, you got to be more aware of when the football's in the air. Doesn't give him an opportunity, shoves him out of bounds. I think it's a good call. And it's a call that puts the ball at the 25 now for Cal. That's the fourth penalty against Ole Miss, and it bailed Cal out of a tough spot. Now Garbers wants to throw on first down. He's been really good moving this offense on first down, and he does it again with a completion across the 35 to Jordan Duncan. This is what the Cal offensive coordinator and head coach, Justin Wilcox, have been wanting to see from Chase Garbers. This is the simple take three steps, throw to the open receiver. He's on time. He puts it in the best possible position. First down. Here's Bo Baldwin, former head coach at Eastern Michigan. Now the offensive coordinator at Cal. Yeah. Play action. Garbers ducks away from a tackle in the backfield, and he'll march it out of bounds. Smart play by Garbers, nothing downfield. It'll be a loss, maybe a, maybe a yard gain on that play. But a positive play, and when it easily could have been a very negative one, Clay, he does a good job of stepping up in the pocket, getting away from the tackle, protecting the football, and then finding a positive, positive result and getting at least one yard to set up a second down with no loss of yards. Kadir Shepard, the excellent senior pass rusher, got in the backfield to disturb that play. Second down and nine. Garbers over the middle, and it's intercepted. DeAndre Prince brings it back to the 34-yard line. True freshman and a rising star in Mike McIntyre's defense. They talked a lot about him yesterday, and he gets the first takeaway for Ole Miss here this morning. He learned from the mistake earlier when they went cover three. And the seam route got wide open. This time, Prince baits him and then steps in right in front of the tight end for the big interception. And we're going to get our first look at the land shark, Shane. And this defense created four turnovers last week against Southeastern Louisiana. And that's their first turnover of the game. And now Phillips, churning ahead, will pick up seven yards on first down. And there's that land shark chain. Coach McIntyre talked to us about it. At first, he tried to get just like the jaws, the regular jaws of a shark. And he said it didn't look great, so they wanted <laughs> to put gold teeth in it to give it more flash. Of all the turnover gimmicks, I, I like this one. There's some I don't like. As Elijah Moore gets the first down. Great run after the catch to get inside the 20. And I think the Florida State backpack one was the worst I'd ever seen. Yeah, I don't think too, too many guys are super excited to go run over and get that backpack. Off the turnover, Ole Miss on the move. Corral. And a designed run. You get it to the 16-yard line. Weaver cut him down there. Now, Weaver was excellent in that game against Washington. He had 18 tackles, a sack, and a forced fumble and was National Defensive Player of the Week. Second and seven, sprinting out. Corral, well, he underthrew that one. He had a man open. It would have been a first down at the five and maybe even more. But Elijah Moore was underthrown. Yeah, an example of, of kind of 
you know, when you're a, or you're a basketball shooter or, or, or a football player in this instance, just kind of trying to aim the throw instead of just following through and firing it to your open target. Corral now 15 of 20, 167. Committed to USC in Florida before signing with Ole Miss. Said he liked Matt Luke's authenticity. Trying to convert on third down. Taking a shot at the end zone and more was open. Maybe a little late to look for that football. Sails over his head, incomplete. All right. Perfect opportunity here. They run the slant and go at the wide receiver position. And he's got him wide open over the top. And he just doesn't lay it out to where he needs to. Missed opportunity there. Great play call by Rich Rock. So here's Logan again. He's missed from 47. He's hit from 29. This will be from 33. Out of the hold of Mac Brown. And it's good. So Ole Miss will have to settle for three. We've got a one-point game with under four minutes to go here in the first half. We have seen the land shark chain for the first time today. The freshman with an interception. DeAndre Prince and a three-pointer from Logan. Ole Miss scores off the turnover by California, but they only get three out of it. Well, our week three Monday Night Football matchup dates back to 1932. The one and one Bears at FedEx Field to take on the Redskins, looking for their first win of the season. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Redskins a bit of a mess right now. Here's Ashton Davis on the return, and he is hit hard as he crosses the 20. He went airborne as Sam Williams and Jacquez Jones got down there on the coverage. We step aside. Back in Oxford in a moment. On the last Cal series, that land shark defense created a turnover. It led to some points. Yeah, big, big, big job by them to, to see what went wrong earlier. And this time, Prince baited Chase Garbers into throwing that football and was there to make the big interception. Only resulted in three points, though. Now, turnovers have been such an issue for this Cal program the last couple of years. Garbers has had issues throwing interceptions. But that was their first turnover since week one. Garbers is complete here to his tight end, Gavin Reinwall, sophomore out of Elk Grove, California. Just his third catch of the year, but another nice play on first down. Yeah, the interception has a quarterback. You forget about it. He steps back there and just fires away to the open receiver for another first down. Said it before, first down is going to be big today, and both teams have found positive gains most of the time on first down, and they do again, even though that looked like that was going to be a broken play for Cal. Charles Wiley with the tackle on Garbers, but he got four yards out of him. Positive plays. We've seen it happen a couple times where he gets pressure and pushed to the side, but for him to get some kind of positive yardage to put him in a manageable second down, that's so key for a quarterback. Garbers hands it off to Brown, and it'll be third down and a long four. Getting back to the turnovers, Ryan. Cal had 31 last year, most in the F FBS. And Garbers threw 10 picks in his 10 starts last year. Yeah, the quarterback position alone threw the second most interceptions in the country a year ago. Only two this year through four games. He can't be hesitant, though, throwing the football down the football field. He's been very successful today. That was just a great play by the defense on the last possession. Here comes the pressure from Ole Miss. Garbers gets rid of it. Pass incomplete. Well covered on the outside by Jalen Jones. Trayvon Clark, the intended receiver, but Jones was well positioned. He is coming back from a major ACL injury last year. And Mike, Ole Miss is glad to have him back. Mike McIntyre is not hesitating when bringing a lot of pressure and playing strong man-to-man -man out on the perimeter. Is there a perfect example? Tight coverage stops the first down from being made. 
And Stephen Coots with the punt. Elijah Moore to return. He's going to let it bounce. He takes a good Ole Miss bounce back the other way to the 27-yard line. More of what we thought was going to play out defensively, they've, they've started to, to find, their, find their, their way here. Well, you can help people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate. Unfortunately, the Houston area got hit hard recently by Tropical Storm Imelda, so the Red Cross really needs donations right now. Yeah, we were there a week ago, Clay, and what a turn of events in just a week. Matt Corral going back to work with this Ole Miss offense. He hits Elijah Moore. And we're going to have another penalty here. Yeah, Evan Weaver. Coach Wilcox talked about his in, his emotional play and you know, a few foul. years ago. Roughing the passer. Defense number 89. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. A few years ago, Justin Wilcox talked about how he couldn't hold off on these types of plays. Here, he just is an un, it's just an unwarranted act. He's there's no need. The ball's out of his hands. Yeah. We talked to Wilcox yesterday about him, and he said he is such a throwback. That number 89 that he wears, even though he's a linebacker, that, that's perfect for him because he plays like it's 1989. <laughs> and more penalty flags. This is going to be a false start, I think, on Ole Miss. False start. Offense, number one. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Evan Weaver, the senior from Spokane, Washington, 11 tackles already today. Yeah, he, we knew he was going to have to step up uh, to kind of cover for both Cameron Good and Tevin Paul being out. He's done that. The good news for Cal is Good and Paul should be back next week. They're not so sure about Ben Hawk Schreider. It could be a few weeks with his injury. That throw over the middle is incomplete. From Corral, Moore was the closest receiver. You made a point to me this week watching film how Corral just looks more comfortable throwing the football on the run, but when he sits in the pocket yeah. and has to stand up tall, he hasn't been as accurate as, he, as he's wanted to be. Rich Rod said he has an uncanny ability to throw on the run. And he was on the run, or wanted to be, but Coin Dang got him. One of the top Juco linebackers in the country last year. And that is the first sack for Cal today. Yeah, not only the top, not only one of the top, the top outside linebacker coming out of Juco. Untouched around the edge and just finds a way to grip and hold down. Corral sets up a long, long third down. Third and 21. What would you call that, extra long? <laughs> Now, a long look over to the sidelines. Matt Luke is going to take a timeout to talk over his third and 21 play. Step aside here in Oxford. A good game between number 23, Cal, and Ole Miss. It's Justin Wilcox. 42 years old in his first head coaching job at Cal. He had five wins in 2017. Seven wins in a bowl appearance last year. And he's got this program pointed in the right direction, trying to come down here to the SEC and get the first win for the Pac-12 on the road in nine years against an SEC opponent. Justin Wilcox is 8-0 and in the non-conference since being named head coach. Scotty Phillips in the backfield after the timeout. It is third and a bus ride. Corral on the draw will give it to Phillips. He's got some room, but guess who chases him down? Evan Weaver. Man, I, I'll tell you what, if he went back to his hometown in Spokane, he may have still caught Corral on that play. He is so fast. He's a magnet. That's that's the only way I can describe it. He is he is magnetized to whoever has the ball. He is always there defensively. Special, special player. 
So Cal calls a timeout ahead of what we expect to be an Ole Miss punt. Just 51 seconds to go before halftime. And now we take a look at this week's AP college football rankings brought to us by Allstate. You see Alabama with a big lead on Southern Miss. LSU and Vanderbilt going on right now. Utah, we talked about it. That loss last night really hurts the Pac-12 chances, Ryan, to get a team in the college football playoff. It does. With the brutal schedule that Washington State has, I think they've kind of become the last and final option. Oregon's going to have to run the table to be considered that, and they need Auburn to be very, very good in the SEC West. Mac Brown, second year is the Ole Miss punter having a great year, and he's going to pin Cal deep again. Great job of pinning them deep, though. Cal most likely is just going to run a few plays here. They get the ball to start the second half, which I think is huge for them. 61-yard punt, no return, and here comes Chase Garber is back out on the field. You can see Cal number 23 in the country. This is their highest ranking since 2015. One of six Pac-12 teams ranked in the top 25 this week. Yeah, well, the top one went down last night. So now we're talking about teams that are in the ladder of the top 25. Last week, USC was in there, Get, gets beat by BYU, gets replaced. Arizona State with the big win over Michigan State in East Lansing last week. Yes, no surprise here that Justin Wilcox is going to play it conservatively on the road. Final seconds of the half. He's going to be happy to take a one-point lead into the locker room at the half. Got to be really pleased with a makeshift defense at the linebacker position to go into this half with a one-point lead, especially how well... The Ole Miss offense has moved the football field, moved the ball up and down the football field. Point of first half. Saw three touchdowns, a couple of field goals. Just one turnover. And Cal, despite the 9 a.m. Pacific time kick, despite the humidity and weather here, pretty good first half, a one-point lead. For number 23, Cal, on the road today. Yeah, couldn't couldn't have gone, I don't think, any better for this football team. Other than that one turnover by Chase Garbers, they have come in here to Oxford ready to play and have shown it. And like you said, Ryan, Cal will have the ball to start the second half. One hundred sixty eight yards total offense for Ole Miss one fifty four for the Golden Bears. Let's go down to Taylor Davis. Thanks, guys. Coach, your defense is having to work through some injuries at that linebacker position. How are they adjusting to the movement? Uh, we started out real slow. We didn't play very well in the first quarter. I thought the guys settled down um, in the second quarter, played a little bit better. We got to tackle better on defense. That's everybody, and we got to be better against the pass, covering and rushing. It's a one-point game, and you get the ball to start the second. What more do you want to see offensively? Uh, protecting the quarterback and a little bit more out of the run game, and that involves everybody, but I like the way the guys are battling. I think Chase Garbers is uh, doing a really nice job. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. 14-13 at the half. Stay tuned for the halftime report with Kevin Connors and Emmanuel Acho. Scores, updates, analysis, and much more that's coming up right after this timeout. Number 23, Cal, leading Ole Miss by one. Getting ready to start the second half alongside Ryan Leaf. They allowed teams to go up and down the football field, but didn't break, only got, only got field goals and field goals attempts. That's why Cal leads right now 14 to 13. And Cal is going to start with the ball here in the second half as we take a look at our best performer brought to you by AT&T. And it's the guy we talked about from the very beginning. Evan Weaver has been absolutely everywhere. Rushing the running back out on the perimeter. And then ultimately at the end, here with one of the best and quickest guys on the perimeter, he's the one that gets out there and makes the tackle. 12 tackles in the first half. And his career high is 18, which he had in that upset of then number 12 Washington a couple of weeks ago in Seattle. So he's well on pace to go over that. 
as Chase Garbers in this Cal offense goes to work. First play of the second half, and it's Marcel Dancy with a good run out of the backfield after the catch. He's going to be close to a first down. Not near the 35-yard line. Chunk plays on first down have been huge for both teams, but in particular for this Cal team. They just really struggled offensively through the first three weeks, and today has been the catalyst for the football team so far. They give them the first. 14th first down of the day for Cal. Garbers has looked confident. Smart play, throws it out of bounds. And we check in with Taylor Davis. Yeah, guys, I spoke with head coach Matt Luke coming out of the locker room at halftime. He said overall in the first half, he's really pleased with what they did offensively, specifically Matt Corral and the way he commanded this offense with composure. He wants that to continue. And for his defense, he said, we have got to get off the field on third downs. Cal is taking advantage of their time on the field, especially the way Chase Garbers is playing today, showing a lot of confidence out there. Matt Luke wants his defense to step up in those opportunities. All right, Taylor, thanks. And Chase Garbers you know, could have a career passing day today. Avoids a sack on his feet, and he'll walk out at the 35-yard line as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. He was in trouble there, but again, avoids a loss on the play. You know, this is the third time we've seen it happen where he's had somebody's paw on him from the Ole Miss Rebels, and he finds a way to protect the football, get loose, and make a positive play and not a negative one. And for a quarterback that struggled a bunch, he's doing a tremendous job of, of making positive plays and at least giving them a shot on third down. Bo Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, his unit. And three of five on third down in the first half. We're going to send Jeremiah Hawkins in motion to the left side. Play action pass. Garbers, standing tall, takes a bump. Still looking deep down the middle. Going for Remigio, and he makes the catch. Nico Ramiglia with a big play down to the 22 of Ole Miss. Completely different quarterback play right now. A week ago, he dropped back. His first guy wasn't open. He took off. Here he sits in the pocket, finds an open receiver down the football field. Doesn't quite get it out far enough to him, but Ramiglia makes the big catch. Huge explosive play for Cal. The sophomore from Newport Beach with a 43-yard throw wants to throw again. This time, throws it away. But you're right about his confidence. And how about the play that his sophomore receiver gave him? He underthrew him and, and does a, a great job of coming back to the football. And if, if he doesn't catch it, most likely he may get an interference call because the defender went through the body. Great catch by Nico and has put the Cal Bears in another scoring opportunity. Matt Luke talked about that with, with Taylor getting off the football field on third down. And again, it doesn't happen. Garber's now over 200 yards passing, a couple of touchdowns. He has been intercepted. Chris Brown, the lone setback as Garber's goes under center. It will be Brown hit in the backfield. Here come the Landshark swarming and dropping Brown at the 30-yard line. It's Willie Hibbler, the senior inside linebacker, leading the way. Yeah, Willie Hibbler does a perfect job of just splitting the offensive lineman Puts him in a position, he's got to make the tackle, and he takes down Chris Brown in the backfield for a big loss. Chris Brown had a touchdown in the first half, but it was a receiving touchdown for the big running back. I've been surprised to see them go five wide so many times today, but... Passing situation here, obviously, third down and long. Garbers over the middle, hits his tight end, Tonjes. And he is going to be very close to the line to gain. In fact, he got it. Jake Tonjes with just his second catch of the year. But it moves the chains. And here is Cal back in the red zone. Yeah, for a minute here, I thought he might have not gotten it. But as he catches the football, he needs to put that left foot in the ground and just get upfield, north and south. Luckily for them, they got the first down. Puts them in a position for first and ten. They can get a first down without scoring the touchdown, Clay. Couple of big explosive plays on this drive. Dancy on the running back draw. He spins and gets inside the 10-yard line. But 
You know, Justin Wilcox talked to us about it at length, Ryan, about the need for explosive plays, and we have seen them show up here on this series. Yeah, I mean, all game long, they've been showing themselves capable of making explosive plays. Bo Baldwin talked about it with us yesterday. They needed it, especially against a really good defense that uh, flies to the football and gets a lot of tackle for losses in the backfield. This will be play number nine of the drive. We've had two 10-play touchdown drives already today. Throwing to the end zone, back shoulder. That's got to be a touchdown. Jordan Duncan with the catch, and that's a touchdown for Cal. Have they announced it? I've never seen an official give us an official announcement that this is a touchdown. They're going to look at it again. <laughs> I think there's some confusion down there with the officials. Well, it looked like it was a confusing pass play, actually. It, it goes right over the head of the out route, and Nico Remigio just turns side and catches it on his outside shoulder. I think that's six play. Was that right foot down? That's what they're going to be looking at. Dave Lambros, our replay official. And Remigio, who had that great catch on third down, the 43-yard reception, and now maybe just made a great catch for a second touchdown grab of the year. Here's the call. On the field of a touchdown is confirmed. It is. It's a touchdown for Romigio. It was a confident football throw. Just took one step, fired back, and let it fly. It was actually Jordan Duncan on the touchdown catch. Pardon me. And that is his first touchdown catch of the year. Nine-yard touchdown grab as Greg Thomas comes on for the point after. And he got it. Jordan Duncan capping another big drive for the Cal Bears to start the second half. How does it feel for Jordan Duncan, the Hattiesburg, Mississippi native? Played at Oak Grove High School. He's got a ton of family and friends here, Ryan. How good does it feel catching that touchdown and giving California the seven-point lead? It's got to feel amazing, right? You come back home and, and, and you play as well as you're capable of playing in front of your home fans and friends. It's, it's a great moment for Jordan Duncan. Big catch there. Put this Cal Bears team up by eight points. Yeah, eight points. Excuse me. <laughs> Let's go down to Taylor Davis. Yeah, guys, just to reiterate what you were saying, this is such a huge moment for Jordan Duncan. As you said, he's a local kid. He's from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And as of yesterday, I was told he had over 60 family members coming to this game. And guys, I just got to say, I'm down here on the sideline. They, these Cal fans are really showing up here today. They traveled well. They're loud. They're excited. And they're feeding off this team's energy right now. Fun trip. And over there in the corner of Vaught Hemingway Stadium, and they're pretty loud. And Scotty Phillips gets the carry. I'm sure they had a lot of fun in the Grove before the game. Luke Beckett on that tackle. The Grove is such a great experience, one of the best in college football. Not any chances, folks from the Pac 12, to get out here. Scotty Phillips again. We haven't seen a lot of him today compared to past weeks. Maybe you know, Beck meets him in the hole and is able to wrestle to the ground and bring up a third down, a sh third short. Phillips hit and thrown back. That's a loss. Beckett, the Little Rock, Arkansas native, gets back with Trey Turner 
to make the play. That'd be a loss of two. So it's fourth down. It's a big, big decision here. I, I was. Luke Beckett. He's the, he's the force up front for them. He was there to make the big stop. Deontay Johnson follows it up, make sure they make sure they don't get any further offensive push. Ramihio back to return this punt, the third for Brown. As the Cal defense comes up with a big, big stop. And with 10.03 to go here in the third quarter, it's 21-13 Cal. The All-State Saturday kickoff is brought to you by Philadelphia Cream Cheese. It must be the Philly. Well, 9 a.m. Pacific time, not ideal for Pac-12 teams on the road to come over here in SEC territory in the heat and humidity, but everything so far has gone well, especially for Chase Garbers, who was four of six on the last Cal drive, 76 yards. He has looked sharp today, did throw the one interception, but all in all, his game has really stepped up here in a tough place to play, and Cal is going to go back to work on offense now. No, he's looked exceptional. The interception, I wouldn't even really fault him on that. That was a great play by the defensive back. He's looked as good as this team needed him to look for this type of road trip in this atmosphere against a really good defensive football team of Ole Miss. He's looking to throw on first down, and he completes a pass to Duncan, who had the touchdown on the last series. His first receiving touchdown of the year. And this game was not even on the schedule when Duncan visited Cal. It's just a, a great situation for a senior in his final year to be able to come back home and play in front of family. Dancy lowers his head, and he's got the first down close to the 40. Yeah, the, the chunk plays you talked about, that first first down, pass to Duncan gets him in a really second and manageable position runs the football advances the chains and again puts them in a situation where it keeps that defense on the football field Garbers all kinds of time scanning the field goes to Duncan again but he didn't stay in bounds as we get down to Taylor Davis well, after that last touchdown, Chase Garbers was greeted with so much excitement on the sideline. Coaches and players saying, this is exactly what we knew you were capable of. It goes back to what coaches told us. This guy just needs to trust his game. So he's certainly gaining some confidence here today. Well, he's got a career high, 239 yards passing, and we still have a lot of game left. He's going to throw again. Confident there, first down, and much more for Tonjes. He is going to go all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Jake Tonjes. A 60-yard play. And the fourth touchdown pass for Garbers. I couldn't be more impressed with Chase Garbers and his, his focus for this football. He, he knew going into this game they had a good game plan ready offensively. Play action fake finds a wide open Tonjes, and then Tonjes just makes a guy miss in the middle of the field, takes out his other defender, ends up for six. Big, big time play by Garbers and Tonjes down here in Oxford. Twenty-eight, thirteen, Cal. And when the tight ends. Didn't have a ton of catches coming into this game for Cal, but he's used them smartly today. He hooks up with Jake Tonjes. A career high in yards and a career high for touchdown passes for Chase Garbers. All Cal now here in the third. Clay Mavic, Ryan Leaf. Taylor Davis back here in Oxford. All-State Saturday kickoff. Number 23, Cal now with the 28-13 lead. Tonjes, the tight end. The fourth different receiver that Chase Garbers has hooked up with today for a touchdown. And the Cal tight ends had three catches all year. They've got three today for 85 yards and a touchdown. And now Ely has to dive on the football. 
And he's got it at the 15-yard line, so it's not going to be ideal field position here for the Rebels. Now Boomer and TJ are back with NFL primetime every Sunday at 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPN+. Plus. They're going to have all the highlights and breakdowns from the day's games, updates after the Sunday night and Monday night games. Scott Van Pelt, Joe Tess will be along for the fun. Lots of reasons to have ESPN+. Plus. This might be the best reason to have it. Great show. Glad to see Boomer and TJ back. All right, so how are the Rebels going to answer them? Yeah, gut check time for them. They need to extend a drive and put up points, not just a field goal either. Corral to Elijah Moore out of the slot, and he gets to the 25-yard line. That's going to be a first down for Ole Miss. Cameron Bynum, the shutdown corner. He's got some NFL potential, makes the tackle there. They were successful early with these types of crossing patterns, especially with the Cal Bears sitting in such a deep zone. They just need to continue to chop away at that, pick up these first downs, allows them to use tempo. Going to the air again, Corral looking for Mingo, and he was interfered with perhaps no penalty flag. Boy, Matt Luke wants a penalty flag thrown on Cameron Bynum, and he's not going to get it. Pretty good, pretty good defense, I think. Cam Bynum's known for his physical play out at the corner position. Hard to tell here with our monitors play, but it, I feel like he got his hand in it pretty well. Corral incomplete again. And so now it's third down. There was Evan Weaver getting right up on Matt Corral to force an errant throw. And Weaver's been everywhere again today. Yeah, you know what's been impressive though, play this second half? It hasn't been all Evan Weaver. It's been his parts around him that have made great big plays. Got him a punt on the last possession. Got him in a position now to be third and long to get the football back. You're three of nine today on third down. Corral is going to be corralled by Luke Beckett. And it's fourth down. Again, Ole Miss got off schedule early. And Cal's defense, you can't do that against this group. No, this defense has responded. It's not all about Evan Weaver here in the second half. Luke Beckett, two huge plays. That is a jailbreak right there. If Luke Beckett doesn't wrap him up by his foot, he may hit his head on the goalpost if he's not careful. This is the fourth punt now for Brown. Remigio is going to make the fair catch at the 20. 53-yard punt, no return. Our All-State mayhem moment. And with a great catch in the end zone on the back oh, by Garbers. He put it ex spot. exactly in the right spot. And hey, give credit to Marie, Marie, <laughs> Remigio here of not putting his hands up because it looked like it was going to him. Flew right over the top of him. And Wonderful job of him knowing where the football was going. That's because they've been working together all offseason and into this season. Big play, big play that turned this game around. And now Cal has an opportunity to maybe put this thing away with another big drive. They'll start from their own 20. And slinging it on first down is Garbers. This one is incomplete, intended for the sophomore Romigio. 5 10. Receiver out of Orange, California. Again, the explosive plays have been there. And there have been more attempts at big chunk plays. There you see it on first down. Garbers looking for big yardage right away on the first play of the series. You know, out of all the uh, all the coaches we talked to yesterday, who, who sounded the most confident to you? And it, to me, it was Bo Baldwin. You know, one guy that you wouldn't necessarily expect it to be. He was confident. I think he had a good game plan in place and knew what was going to happen. Marcel Dancy, first down run. And again, he gets contact early but shakes it off. John Haynes finally brings him down. The strong safety, one of three Juco transfer starters on that defense for Ole Miss. But they're backing up again. And it's another Cal first down. Give him 13 on that play. 13 first downs today. If you would have told Bull Baldwin he'd have that with halfway to Halfway left in the third quarter, he would have probably told you you were crazy after what the first three weeks looked like. First and 10 from the 33. Garbers 
Another open receiver, another first down. Trayvon Clark, who caught the first touchdown today for the Bears. He's their tallest wide receiver at six foot four. Give him 13 yards. Perfectly timed. One, two, three steps and throws on the outbreak. Threw it a little bit behind him, but enough cushion there from the defensive back to make sure he catches it. Gets out of bounds for another first down. And what we've seen with Garbers over his career, he gets better throwing the football in the second half. He's a career 67% on a completion rate in the second half. And Ole Miss heats him up in the backfield. He gets back close to the line of scrimmage, but Sam Williams is going to get the sack. The junior college All-American last year out of Northeast Mississippi. And you see first downs. 21 for Cal. 14 Ole Miss. Wow. Ole Miss won since halftime. Second down and 11 here. And taking the short pass to Remigio, and he turns it into another Cal first down inside the 45 down to the 43-yard line. And this Kia Henry with the tackle. In this drive, Clay, they've both, the first two uh, uh, possessions here, the first drive, they've been first down and got buttoned up and went to second and long. And on both opportunities, they've gotten the first down on second and long. That's, that's the chunk plays that that Bo Baldwin was talking to us about. They're getting them when they need them. 364 yards of offense. 324 have come through the air for Cal. Garber's looking to throw again, and he is going to be sacked this time. And it was a corner blitz for Miles Hartsfield. Third sack today for Ole Miss. Yeah, when they bring corner blitzes play, the quarterback usually doesn't see it coming unless some sort of situation where it's yelled out. He doesn't see him coming from anywhere. And this is a long developing pass play. Doesn't see him come in, gets the sack, and puts him in a, again, a tough position in second and long. And that's a nine-yard loss. Again, you got to credit, though, this Cal offensive line as a whole. Been pretty good today, especially considering how beat up it is. But... Garbers is going to go down second straight sack. This time it's Austrian Robinson, the defensive end. And that is the fifth tackle for loss for the Ole Miss D, and we got a man down, and it is Garbers. His back got bent. I don't know if his leg was caught underneath. So Garber's slow to get up, and they're going to take a look at him. He has been outstanding today, a career day for the sophomore quarterback. Cal hopes he can continue. continue. You see a place that's alive with purpose and passion. You see a place inspired by a long tradition of untraditional excellence. You see a place built by the people, for the people, of California, the nation, and the world. What do you see? You see Berkeley. Chase Garber's helped off the field. He's had a career afternoon, 324 yards passing, four touchdowns. And now he's going to have to come out of the game. And Devon Modster, the junior from Mission Viejo, California, UCLA transfer, brought in to help solidify the quarterback position, makes his Cal debut right here. Eligible this week after sitting out the required full year to be eligible and gets an opportunity on his first game back. Second and a mile. Jeremiah Hawkins with the catch. Hurdles the tackler. Gets to the 40. He's out of bounds inside the 40-yard line at the 37. Good first call for Devon Monster here. Just a quick little outside screen. Really allowed for the pressure of Ole Miss. 
to make that into a big play. They're going to go for it here on fourth down at the 38-yard line, kind of in no man's land. Devon Modster played in five games at UCLA as a redshirt freshman back up to Josh Rosen. And a timeout called here by Old Miss. They want to talk about it. And as they're going to face an offense, it's looking at a fourth and five. Let's go back a couple of years. Devon Modster led the Bruins to a last-second victory over Cal at the Rose Bowl a couple of years ago after Josh Rosen got hurt. Yeah, so he's got experience, right? He's played in this conference. He's won a big game. He knows what it's like to play in the football game. The fact that he hadn't played for a long time is only the thing that you and I had some questions about, but good first play call there. Puts him now in a position on fourth down. It's a big play for the for the Ole Miss defense here to get a stop, because if they, if they do, they have a ball in pretty good field position, and with Chase Garber's out, now may feel some of that momentum shifting in the other direction. So if you're Justin Wilcox, what do you do here? You're, you're punting to pin them deep, right? And it looks like they've changed their mind. They're going to come out and do that play. That's... And so Ole Miss burns a timeout. And still 3.42 to go here in the third quarter. Steven Coots is going to come out to kick. And that's a short punt. And it takes an Ole Miss bounce back toward the 25-yard line. And that's where the Rebels will have it. They need something to get going their way offensively. Well, our next UFC fight night on ESPN Plus is tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific from Mexico City with Mexico's own Yair Rodriguez taking on Jeremy Stevens in the featherweight main event. To order the main card, go to ESPNPlus.com slash UFC. Be sure to download the app. If you're watching on your mobile device, prelims start at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific. Clay Matvick, Ryan Leaf, Taylor Davis here in Oxford. Number 23 Cal leading 28 to 13. And the home team needs to get something going on offense. Matt Corral. They say that'll do. That's a first down and a lot more for Braylon Sanders. He's been out a couple of weeks with a hamstring injury. He looked pretty fleet of foot on that play. Yeah, the ability for Corral to get outside here and then be a run or pass threat finding Sanders, who has been out for most of the fall so far. 40-yard play going with tempo. Corral shedding tackles, and he's finally met by Evan Weaver and Coin Dang, the linebackers, coming in to finish him off. You know, Clay, you just talked about big UFC fight night. <laughs> Evan Weaver probably would fit in just fine. <laughs> he would. Or maybe professional wrestling. I, I, I see something in his future, though. This defense certainly made the, the former Georgia quarterback, Jacob Eason, uncomfortable a couple of weeks ago. Four sacks. That was the second sack for the Cal defense. That's incomplete, intended for more. And that ball was hanging up there in the secondary, and this is a takeaway type defense. It is, and he just he just fired the football too hard here. Here you have a wide open receiver and Elijah Moore just put it on his body. Instead, he overthrows it. Ends up being incomplete. So third down and 12. Cal showing pressure. Ole Miss has struggled on third down all day. Corral. Should have been caught. Incomplete. And Halloran, the senior tight end, knows that he made a mistake. Wide open. Tight end over the middle here. And Corral puts it right on the money this time. But guess what? It heads on a swivel a little bit when 89's coming at you. Ole Miss is going to go for it. And we're going to get another timeout before they snap the ball. Cal, this is a 30-second timeout. Cal using this timeout, their first. And this Justin Wilcox team really has taken on his personality. It has. I played against Justin Wilcox while in college. He was a safety at the University of Oregon, so I got to know him really well. And over the years, all his stops as defensive coordinator along the way, in particular in the Pac-12, 
He's been there for three years. He's looking for and, and trying to stay undefeated in non-conference playing for the first time after two consecutive 3-0 starts, or three consecutive 3-0 starts to go to 4-0 for the first time. This team has really kind of bought into that identity and really has produced well on the road today. And there's Matt Luke also in his third year. And after his team took a week one loss at Memphis, I mean, six wins are going to be tough to come by without a win today. Yeah, it's, you know, he plays in arguably the, the toughest division in the, one of the toughest conferences in the country, too. So, you know, this is a, this is a win that, that they need to have. And we'll see if they can respond here late in the football game. Big fourth down here. Coming out the two-year bowl ban. That's the goal this year. And that's a false start. Out of the timeout, Elijah Moore came out of the blocks too early. False start. Offense, number eight. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. This five yards really... Apparently it matters enough for him to have to punt here, but if you were going to go for it at fourth and 11, you know, I, I understand what his thought process is here. As a wide receiver, you just you just can't you can't go early there. Now Mac Brown comes out. He's been busy today. And this one will roll to the 11-yard line. 2:24 to go here in the third. Cal with a two-score lead, 28 to 13. Let's see if we'll see Monster once again. It looked like Garbers had a pretty difficult time getting off the football field. Thanks, Garbers. He's back. That's that, that's good. Good news for this Cal football team because he's played as well as anybody on the offensive side of the football today. 324 yards passing. And good to see him back out there. I would suspect they're going to run the football a little bit more, try to milk this clock a little bit, establish more of that. And that's what they do. They run it on the right side with Dancy, but there is a flag. And Cal's got a man down as well. Anytime you grab your feet like that, your toes, it's usually a cramp. And that's the tight end, Tanjus, who had the touchdown on the last series. Holding offense number 53. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Let's go back to the play that Chase Garbers was hurt on. He really just kind of gets folded up. Uh, his leg was underneath the body of the Ole Miss player and got forcefully pushed to the ground. Probably just a little bit of a strain. But like you said, happy to see him back. I know everybody who's in blue and yellow out there right now, in particular in the stands, are pleased to see number seven back on the football field. Bo Baldwin said it. Justin Wilcox said it. As you see, Tan just walking off. He's got to start playing like he practices. I think we've seen that today. I haven't been at every Cal practice, but this is this is pretty good. Yeah, uh, this is really good. Let's just put it that way. It wasn't expected necessarily because it hasn't tra it hasn't translated so far this year to do it in the hostile environment in the SEC. He was confident yesterday talking to us about we're going to show them what Pac-12 football is really about down here in the South. So they only needed Devon Modster for one series. Garber's back in there, backed up to the five-yard line. And Marcel Dancy, after that penalty, will get a good chunk of it back out to the 13. I'd expect a heavy dose of, of this kind of running the football here to, like I said, milk the clock a little bit and then not put your quarterback, who was just almost, you know, injured in a way that he couldn't come back from in those types of positions but here they go five wide once again marcel dancy the leading rusher with 38 yards it hasn't been a big running day for cal as they say that garbers takes off a pretty good runner he gets to the 20 yard line it'll be third down and short with kia henry 
making the tackle for the Ole Miss defense, which desperately needs a stop. Now. They definitely need a stop here. Gar Garbers gets them into a position where it's definitely manageable. Third and one. They're able to convert here and extend this drive, but again puts that defense out on the football field for even longer. Cal has converted five of eight third down attempts. Came into the game 30% on the year, last in the Pac-12. Garbers keeps it. He's met and pushed back. That all depends on the spot. Garbers took a smack as he ran right into the teeth of that Old Miss defense. I'm going to say he's short. Not by much. No. That's going to take it to the quarter, though, and they're going to have a decision to make. How about the toughness, though, of Chase Garbers? You know, knocked out of the game, we thought. Runs the ball the next two plays. He's out there pretty much. And so Justin Wilcox and the number 23 Cal Bears one quarter away from getting a big win on the road in the SEC. One quarter to go for Cal. It's been a great day for Garbers. It looks like he's going to be able to continue. Justin Wilcox has never lost a regular season non-conference game. He is 8-0 as the head coach of Cal, including a win over Ole Miss in Berkeley a couple years ago. And he's going to run his punting unit out here. Dario Longhetto is going to kick it on fourth and short. Try and flip the field. Backing up. Elijah Moore makes a good catch. And a good return. Gets it out to the 40-yard line. Good field position for Ole Miss as we start the fourth quarter. And let's take a look at Ryan's leaflets. What are we talking about this week? Yeah, we're talking about the big games today. A week ago, no top 25 matchups. This week, a uh, plethora of them. We got the first game this morning that's up against ours here. Michigan versus Wisconsin. I said Jonathan Taylor against Josh Roswell. Clearly, Jonathan Taylor has won that. 17 carries, 177 yards, and two touches. They are beating Michigan's breaks off 35 to nothing right now. Did you see that coming? I saw a little bit of that coming. I know you're going to talk about a, a potential wipeout later tonight. Matt Corral on the run, and it's a good one for a first down for the Ole Miss quarterback. You don't see that Georgia-Notre Dame game being much of a matchup. Although, I mean, the last time we saw Notre Dame, I think, on the national stage, it was against Clemson, and they were embarrassed. This is a huge opportunity for them. I just don't know if they have the guys ready to make the plays, and I, I think it's going to be a long night in Athens for that fighting Irish football team. The Irish 10 straight losses against the AP Top 10 as Corral is the entire Ole Miss offense right now as he runs it again. Evan Weaver another tackle, but it's a seven-yard pickup for Corral. Penalties have been a problem for Ole Miss. Third downs have been a problem for Ole Miss. They started out okay, but they've really bogged down since the second quarter offensively. That's a first down for Phillips. And as he gets it to the 37. You just mentioned the penalties, right? That, that's what really derailed this football team. When they started picking up a lot of these penalties, we isolate Ev Evan Weaver here. Again, he's right in the spot he's supposed to be. Phillips certainly kind of wins this one, but he gets it to the ground. He loves contact. He just absolutely loves it. And that's one of the rare times we've seen him on the receiving end. Usually he's initiating it, but he still made the tackle. And that's another open field tackle for Coin Dang. You made mention to his height earlier, and it, it, it is odd, but boy, can he get from sideline to sideline with Evan Weaver in the, you know, in the gaps and, and Coin Dang running from sideline to sideline. That's a duo that could be pretty, pretty impressive the rest of the season. Second down and two for Ole Miss. Bobbled. Corral able to find it. He's going to find the turf as he swarmed under by a host 
of Cal tacklers and Nick Alfton making a nice play. Number 49 getting into the backfield. He was the guy who was playing tight end last week. You know, you bring guys in and, and this coaching staff, which is probably one of the best in the business, scheme the plan to put him in positive positions after being playing in tight end last week. And, you know, he makes a big tackle there and puts him in third down. One of linebacker injuries and he was asked to step up. Now Corral stepping up out of the pocket, and he's going to run close to another Ole Miss first down. Ashton Davis tracks him down at the 26-yard line. They will move the chains. Corral has been the offense on this series. Yeah, he's, he, he needs to be, uh, and use, utilizing his legs here to get the first down and keep the chains moving because, you know, I would suspect that, that, that Luke is really going to be looking at this as, as four-down territory from now on. 56 yards rushing, a rushing touchdown for Corral. He'll give it to Phillips, who came into this game with 71 rushing attempts through the first three weeks, the most in the country. And he's carried it a lot today, but we haven't seen any explosive runs really for Phillips. No, they haven't, they haven't gotten past. You know why? Because Evan Weaver's just standing there. He's not moving. He's like a brick house and is right there ready to make the tackle again in there assisting Jalen Hawkins on the big stop to bring up second down. Corral. Looking left, throwing toward the end zone, and it was nearly intercepted. Good coverage by Elijah Hicks. Great coverage by Elijah Hicks. He's not fooled at all with the pump fake, but then what startles me here is is why does corral continue to try to make that throw when he knows the guy didn't bite on it that's that's the freshman mistake when you really have one play in mind and you continue to do it even though it's not there for you elijah moore in the slot on the right and he's gonna throw incomplete to jonathan mingo and now it's another fourth down like I said a few minutes ago, you know, they're, they're in four down territory now, down 12 or down 15 points with about 11 minutes to go. They're going to need to get six here, not three. You can't trade field goal for touchdown with the Cal Bears and this defense right now. Ole Miss with three field goal attempts today, two makes. Yeah, three not enough. Corral over the middle. Caught. Great catch, and Elijah Moore gets him down to the one-yard line. The sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, first down goal to go after the 20-yard game. Yeah, a little surprised that they brought the blitz. Thought they would sit back in coverage and make the young quarterback make a play. Instead, they put man-to-man -man and allowed Elijah Moore to get open and almost get into the end zone. And so now the Rebels knocking on the door. They've got Snoop Connor in. In the backfield now, number 24. This is the 10th play of the drive. Phillips back there as well. And it'll be Phillips. Not much. Second down. I want to say almost every scoring drive today, Clay, for both teams have been in double digits, I think. I mean, it's been rather impressive for these scoring drives and these offenses that coming in, we both didn't think they were going to be the reason why this game was close. Ball's loose. And Ole Miss scrambles to cover it. Corral is going to be down at the 14-yard line. Well, they're actually going to mark it at the 12, but a loss for Ole Miss when they were right on the doorstep. I, I, I continue to see it week in, week out down on the goal line inside the three yard line and these teams and these offenses continue to stay in the shotgun position get under center get in the end zone you don't have to be cute down here you just got to put it through and be physical and now they back up third down corral has it batted down and now cal has forced another fourth down situation we'll see what Matt Luke decides to do. Is he going to take the three points again, or is he going to go for it? They're going to take the three attempt here. Luke Beckett there with the big hand, knocking the ball down. Fan base not 
quite pleased that they're going for three here. Cal's on alert probably for a fake. Another reasonable attempt here for Logan. 29 yards. He already made a 29-yarder. That was back in the first half. Kick is up. And it is no good. They get nothing. And the Cal defense runs off the field with head held high. Also, no matter if he kicks that ball through, it's still a three-score game. Cal's defense shows up big, stops Ole Miss again. We hit out 28-13 here in Oxford, Cal Bears. Now Logan throwing his helmet down just moments ago. Frustrated with himself as he missed a field goal from 29 yards away. It's been an ineffective second half for Ole Miss. Mistakes, missed opportunities, and that Cal defense certainly making it hard. Ten straight opponents held under 24 points. They have held Ole Miss to 13 and as we're well into the fourth quarter. And Marcel Dancy gets that carry on first down. Gets it to the 25-yard line. And it's a fun defense to watch. That guy in particular, Evan Weaver, the senior inside linebacker, real fun to watch. Yeah, he's one tackle away from his career high that he had a couple weeks ago against Washington. But I tell you what, this second half has been about his part, the other parts of this defense. Big plays. Luke Beckett has stepped up huge in the second half, limiting Ole Miss's offensive production. Two tight ends to the right. Clock is Cal's friend now, and they will run it with Marcel Dancy to the 27-yard line. And as Lakia Henry makes the stop, it'll bring up third down and manageable here for Cal. They have to move the chains here, keep the ball, keep that clock running. Manageable third down, they control the football. Every play is in the playbook here right now, so it's not like Ole Miss can sell out on the run or the pass. They have to be ready for anything and try to stop this from being converted so they can get the football back and try to get back in this football game. And Ole Miss desperately needs a stop here. And they take the play clock down and they took it down too far. It's going to be a delay, delay game. game. Offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Now, I understand Cal wanting to use as much of the clock as they can, but that, that, that's, uh, that's a bad, bad mistake. It's a terrible mistake as a quarterback. Third and three goes to third and eight. Your, your percentage drops significantly there. A first down here would take another three minutes off the clock or make them start using their timeouts. That's a, that's a big mistake. Hopefully, he can make up for it here by converting on third and eight. Garbers will float it along the sideline for Duncan. And that's a catch. 42-yard line, Jordan Duncan hauls it in. Boy, he's made some big plays today. It's just a tremendous job of, of Chase Garbers finding the one-on-one -on -one matchup and throwing the ball in a place, almost a back shoulder throw, but a little bit higher. Prince, the freshman, doesn't seem to find the ball fast enough and Jordan Duncan goes up and makes a huge grab, gets his foot inbounds. Another third down conversion. The Mississippi native having himself a great game here in his home state. And they convert on third down, keep the chains moving, keep that clock moving. As Dancy is thrown down, second down coming up. It's a brutal schedule for Cal. Uh, this is the last non-conference game. They host Herm Edwards and Arizona State next week. The Sun Devils 3-0. They're taking on Colorado tonight. You can see they still have road games at Oregon, Utah, and Stanford. This is a team that I had going 8-4 and four when the year started. And they needed some things to break their way. I had them losing to Washington. And then I had them losing today in my prediction. So, you know, this, this is an opportunity for Justin Wilcox in year three to put themselves in a position to win the Pac-12 North. I said early on that I didn't know if they were capable of winning it this year, 
but I thought they would decide who does. Yeah. And they've already took a chunk out of that by beating Washington in week two. The North is a is a battleground, don't get me wrong. And road games at Oregon and at Utah will be brutal for this football team. Chase Garber is taking another deep shot. He has looked so much more confident throwing the football today. That pass incomplete. Yeah, there, there, there was an anxiety issue when you got into games. I, I just haven't seen that nervousness today. 344 yards passing, looking for more, more contact. Again, no penalty. Tanjas, the intended target. As DeAndre Prince, the true freshman, who's played a lot today, and we knew he would in the Ole Miss secondary, was in on the coverage, and it's fourth down again. And he's looked good as a freshman. Not starting quite yet, but is probably going to be their starting corner before it's all said and done as a true freshman. Stephen Coots and Dario Longhetto have alternated punts today for Cal. It's Longhetto now. And Elijah Moore making the catch at the 12-yard line. That's where Ole Miss has it. Time running out on the Rebels with 6.22 to go. They're down 15. The All-State Saturday kickoff is presented by All-State, reminding you that football season is mayhem. They ain't never lost a party in the Grove, but they're in jeopardy of losing this football game and going to two and two. Ole Miss trailing by 15. Saturdays in the South, Tuesday, 9 Eastern. The history of SEC football, part four of that eight-part series coming up. 1971 through 79. That'll be a fun look back. Great series. So here's Ole Miss. Backs against the wall near their own end zone. They'll get to the 20 here after the catch by Tylen Knight. Clock working against the Rebels here, who have moved the football today, Ryan Leaf, but they have not been able to finish. No, and when you were down linebackers, schematically, Justin Wilcox talked about us, covering the whole football field was going to be difficult. But when you got down inside that red zone, if they were finding ways to stop them and make them kick or attempt field goals, he would see that as a win. Phillips came off the field. Ely is in at running back. They're going to throw it here to Moore. Nice stiff arm, and he'll get to the 26-yard line. It's Dontario Drummond, excuse me. Drummond on that catch, the J.C. transfer. Seam receivers slipping on the football field a little bit today on this turf. First down, Ole Miss. And that's incomplete. Ely couldn't haul it in. Second and ten. You know, the penalties in the second quarter started to really derail that tempo that they had developed. And they haven't quite ever really got it back. It's kind of been a herky-jerk way they've been going about it. They can't afford to they can't afford to have that happen here on this drive if they want to want to be in a position to, to get back in this football game. Timeout. And a man down. We'll check on him when we come back. Ole Miss down two scores. They've got five and a half minutes to work with. Got it second down and ten at their own 26-yard line. Cal just lost both of their nickelbacks. Travion Beck, it looked like, went to the locker room. And Brandon Smith is off the field as well. Yeah, uh, it looked like they were cramping. They're probably trying to get some fluids in them. But that's an interesting position because they've had to play nickel predominantly this whole football game because of the loss of linebackers schematically. Corral. It's a pressure up the middle. Throws. It's incomplete. Third down. Trey Turner, number five, the senior safety with a nice play. They move him out to kind of play corner here almost. He gets over the top and does a tremendous job of getting his hand in there right as the ball starts to come. Fans not happy looking for an interference call there. Third down. Ole Miss needs the 36-yard line. Corral underthrown and nearly picked off. Ashton Davis 
who walked onto the program five years ago, had to beg for a spot on the roster, and now is a potential NFL star in the future, nearly had an interception. They continue to bring the pressure. It's not going to change. Tim Garuda brought everybody that time, put man-to-man -man coverage. This time it looks like they're going to play a little more zone. Try to make Matt Carell beat them with his arm. And going to go for it here on fourth down. Ole Miss slinging it out to Sanders. Sanders, great effort after the catch and after contact to get that first down. And they are two for two today on fourth down. A little risky business here by Corral to throw this ball before the sticks, but Sanders does a tremendous job of getting upfield and getting the first down. Just muscled his way to keep possession. That one off target. Trey Turner again batted that one down. It was intended for Tylen Knight. Incomplete. Well, the production in the second half for Ole Miss is basically the story of this game because Ole Miss had 13 points at halftime. And it's a bit skewed. They've moved the football up and down in between the 20s. They haven't been able to finish like you said. Shut out here in the second half. They need points and they need them quickly. They need touchdowns and that's not going to help. Tylen Knight can't haul it in. Again, a little low on that throw from Corral. And it'll bring up third down. Corral took a hit there before he let it go. It was a little slow getting up. You know, we thought Chase Garbers would be the one that might struggle at quarterback today. As it happens, it's, it's been Corral and, and the Ole Miss offense. You know, they haven't turned the football over, which I think was a big thing. I mean, that's what Cal does is get turnovers. And that hasn't happened today. But they haven't been able to finish like you talked about. And that's been the biggest, biggest takeaway from this offense. Well, John Rice Plumley is going to come in. We'll see for how long as Corral was let off the field. John Rice Plumley, true freshman, his first career snap. And he's going to run it. The Hattiesburg, Mississippi native busted loose inside the 20, and he's down inside the 15-yard line. John Rice Plumley on his first college play rips off a 47-yard run. Wonderful play call by Rich Rod. He sees a, a situation where numbers add up, and you go one-on-one -on -one with the safety, and he breaks away for a big play. And now here's Ely scoring quickly. Ole Miss is in the end zone. With close to four and a half minutes left, Ole Miss still has life. Kind of the story of the year for, for Justin Wilcox and this team. Going up big a week ago against North Texas, having to close it out at the end. Two true freshmen there with back-to-back -back big plays for the Rebels. Gets them in the end zone. John Rice Plumley and Jerry and Ely both will be playing for Mike Bianco's baseball team here at Ole Miss in the spring. And they have given the Rebels a chance here late in the fourth quarter as it's now an eight point game. The opportunity for this Rebel football team. Two freshmen step on the scene late in the football game and they got the Rebels ready to go here 28-20. Matt Corral got shaken up. John Rice Plumley comes in a quarterback for Ole Miss. And his first career snap takes it 47 yards to set up the touchdown run by Jerry and Ely, two exciting freshmen here in Oxford. And now Ole Miss down just eight. Still plenty of time on the clock. Both teams with two timeouts as Cal is ready to go back on offense. And they'll start from the 25-yard line. Sports Center tonight with Scott Van Pelt. Herbie's going to have his week four takeaways. Plus, Minshew mania going on in Jacksonville. And can the Cubs wake up in time and regroup for a wild card run? Sports Center with SVP and for college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Minshew mania. <laughs> the mustache. The mustache is wild and loose. And on the Palouse tonight, going home to Pullman to watch his alma mater play UCLA here on ESPN. Well, Cal 
in the second half. A couple of touchdowns, but the last three drives have resulted in punts. Throw is complete. It's a first down. Chase Garber is having a career day. He hits Tonjes, his tight end again. You know, I haven't seen him look so confident and poised in the pocket there. Standing sturdy and tall. Puts a direct pass right into the arms of Tonjes for a big first down. Moves the chains. Career highs in touchdown passes with four. 366 yards and counting. That's a career high. 23 completions today for Garbers. And he's going to run it this time on the draw. Finds a seam and picks up eight. Lakia Henry knocks him down. But it's all about Cal keeping the clock moving. You almost like that, right? I mean, you get it to second down and short, and now you're able to, you know, call whatever you want in the playbook. You put Ole Miss on their heels. Wondering what to do with their timeouts as the clock continues to tick down, tick down, tick down. There's Justin Wilcox. Third year head coach. Trying to get his team to 4 and 0. Oh. Dancy. And he lowered his shoulder pads trying to get that first down on the right side. It's going to be close. And Dancy had a great game in Seattle a couple of weeks ago, a couple of touchdowns. And it's going to be short. We're going to get a timeout called for by Ole Miss. It'll be third down and inches. Second charge timeout. Ole Miss. This is a 30-second timeout. So All right, so now Ole Miss down to one timeout remaining. Let's look at Garber's big day. Four touchdown throws to four different receivers. That's huge for me because a year ago, we didn't know who was going to catch the football. This He's got a, a group of wide receivers that are all capable of making big for Brown out of the backfield. Here, Jordan Duncan pass, and then the big play to, to Tonjes to score and put him up big in the third quarter. His younger brother, Ethan, is one of the top high school quarterbacks in the class of 2020. He is committed to Washington, though, and was rooting against his brother two weeks ago in Seattle. Hey, I have two younger brothers, all right? There's a bit of sibling rivalry that goes, goes deep everywhere. So here it is, third and very short. Oh, miss! They made the stop. Benito Jones, the senior from Waynesboro, Mississippi, the big anchor in the middle. He and Tyreekus Tisdale get on that stop. What a big stop. I mean, they're going to take a look at it, but you know, from up here, it looks like they got the stop. It's going to bring up a fourth and short. I think they may have even lost a couple of inches. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Benito Jones, you know, I asked him about being a fit, you know, being a senior in, in his fourth year and sticking around when all the things went down. You know what was really cool and what he told me? He said, I'm a man of my word. I mean, this day and age a little bit to hear somebody. Yeah, they, they, they lost a, a couple lot. of inches on that play. They're going to punt it and make this Ole Miss offense go the length of the field score a touchdown which they've only done twice today and get a two-point conversion justin wilcox feels really comfortable with putting his defense in that position i think yeah how many times has justin wilcox seen his team grind out wins in the last three years Wow, so Ole Miss. They had to, otherwise it was going to run down. Just used uh, their last time out. They had to. It was going to run down to two, yeah. two minutes and ten seconds. And, you know, right now time is more important than the timeouts, especially in college football where you get the clock to stop yep. after every first down. So here's Matt Luke. His team's going to likely have to take it a long way down the field with depend on the punt. Now later tonight... We'll have Oklahoma State, number 12, Texas from Austin. Oklahoma State with that powerful offense. Chuba Hubbard, nation's leading running back. 
Top receiver Tylen Wallace. Can they beat the Horns? The last win for Texas against Oklahoma State in Austin was 2008. We'll see what happens tonight. 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on ABC. Those Longhorns, they fear that mullet. So if you're Ole Miss, do you bring pressure here, try and block this kick, or do you set up for a good return? I think you set up for a good return here because you got enough time. You feel comfortable with if you have to go with Plumley at quarterback. It is Dario Longhetto. He will not face much heat. Fair catch called for, and it would be made by Moore at the 10-yard line. You know, that, that was safe punt. They, they didn't do either. They just they were afraid maybe they were going to run a fake there and not and end the football game. So they didn't have anything set up there other than to catch the football and then just hope that Plumley in this offense can move the 90 yards and get six. So Matt Corral does not come out on the field. It will be John Rice Plumley who led that touchdown drive with his feet. The big play on that last series. The true freshman in a big spot here in Oxford. Takes the shotgun snap, looking downfield. He'll dump it out. And it is caught near the sideline. That's going to be a short game. And we welcome those of you watching on ESPN2. Number 23, Cal, leading here late in Oxford, Mississippi, alongside Ryan Leaf and Taylor Davis on play Matthew. And Ole Miss in a tough spot here. They've got the clock working against them. They have no timeouts. And a true freshman at quarterback in John Rice Plumlee. Second down. Pass complete to Elijah Moore. He's got the first down, and he's after the 25. Yeah, that's big right there to get the first down, get that clock to stop. But I need to see some, I need to see some uh, movement here offensively by the freshman and understand that he doesn't have all this time in between plays to let the clock tick away. Ole Miss needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Out of timeouts. Plumley. Complete again. And another first down for Ole Miss. That's Elijah Moore moving the chains. Matt Corral, the starting quarterback, injured on a play on the last Ole Miss series. John Rice Plumley came in and led the Rebels in a touchdown drive. Plumley looking over the middle. Complete to Sanders. He takes a heavy hit from Evan Weaver, who led the nation with 159 tackles last year. Yeah, been there all day long. They need to get up on the ball and get rolling here. They're running out of time. Clock is moving. Under a minute and a half to go. John Rice Plumley scanning the field. Comes to Sanders. Makes the catch. Stays on his feet. Diving toward the midfield line. He's got the first down. Good job of not only getting the first down, but then getting out of bounds to stop the clock. Interested to see here what Justin Wilcox and Tim DeRuder do with the defensive schematics, whether they start bringing pressure to the young freshman or they sit back and make him make a decision and throw the ball down the football field. Ole Miss has attempted four field goals today. A field goal does them no good in this situation. John Rice Plumley, the backup quarterback, trying to be the hero, throwing it deep. Downfield, there's a man it is caught! Demarcus Gregory! going up over the defender Cameron Bynum and hauls it in first down and goal. They bring some pressure from the outside and then leave him one-on-one -on -one back there. He throws it up. Gregory goes up and makes a big catch and now they're in business. Phillips. A couple of yards and they're going to have to hurry. I don't know if there's a good call there or run them the football. You don't have any timeouts. You just wasted probably 15 seconds that you desperately need if you're unable to score here right away. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Sprinting out to the right is Plumley. <laughs> Stays on his feet, and he's down to the two-yard line. And now Ole Miss is going to have to hurry up to the line. You know, I like his physicalness here, but you've got to throw that ball out of bounds. Save the time. Under 30 seconds to go. Scotty Phillips in the backfield. Plumley. It's going to throw. Caught! And they're going to mark 
Elijah Moore short of the goal line. It's fourth down. They've got to hurry up. Clock is moving. He better call a play because he's got to throw it. Plumley. No. Did he get in? It doesn't look like it. Cal has held. What a finish. What a timeout. Ole Miss did not manage the win. Clock well late. The game is over. That's the end. Freshman quarterback. First two minute drill in any sort of fashion in a big game like this. We're going to look at it again, but it certainly looked like Evan Weaver, the great tackler for Cal, made the stop on the final play. Yeah, and, and if, because they had to run a play so quickly, they didn't get a chance to run the third down play where it looked like he may have been in or may have not been. That's a huge thing, not having that timeout available. Here's another look. He's in the end zone, but if they could have reviewed that play, there's a good chance that that's a touchdown because it looks like the ball crosses the plane when he catches it, and then he falls outside of the end zone. That's huge not having that timeout. And then the play where Evan Weaver comes in and makes the stop on John Rice Plumley on the goal line. Number he does the 89. Right thing. He does the right thing here and runs the play. I know this better than most. But he just gets stood up. Evan Weaver scrapes on the outside and is able to rip that football back. Forward progress stop. Game over. What a finish. Boy, it looked like John Rice Plumley, the true freshman, might be the hero for Ole Miss. Short of the goal line is confirmed. The game is concluded. The 21st tackle of the day for Evan Weaver wins the game for the Cal Bears. Yeah, in a, in a week where they lost a bunch of guys in that linebacker room, he steps up and has a career day here in Oxford and on the final play decides the football game. Justin Wilcox, this football staff, they've got something special here. Evan Weaver leading the, leading the way. They're going to head back to happy campers to take on the Arizona, Sun, Arizona State Sun Devils Friday night. Chase Garbers with a terrific game for Cal. As they stay undefeated, they go to 4-0. And Wilcox still has not lost a regular season non-conference game in his career at Cal. He's 9-0 now. 28 to nothing. Number 23 gets a big win in SEC country. That's what I that's the biggest takeaway for me to come down here, play a 9 a.m. Pacific kickoff, and really kind of uh, dominate on both sides of the football for much of the football game and then when they needed the defense the most they stood up and made the play Evan Weaver the leader of this defense coach Wilcox has got to be extremely proud of the team and their their perseverance let's go back to the last series for Ole Miss and Demarcus Gregory made a great catch on that pass from Plumley that put Ole Miss at the 10 yard line yeah Cameron Cameron Bynum Loses the football and makes a great catch by Gregory. Now, right there, if that ball is crossed the plane, it has to be where he catches that. That official sees where the ball comes down and possibly a knee. If they had a chance to review it, but because they had no timeouts left and it was fourth down, they had to run a play to get it off before the clock ran out. Evan Weaver makes the stop. Ball game. Let's go down to Taylor Davis. Coach, a hard-fought battle down to the very end, and your defense did it down four linebackers. What did they show you today about their adaptability? I think just the, the effort and the toughness they played with. We, we could have finished that game much better. you got to give them credit. There's some really talented athletes, and those guys are well coached. But uh, really appreciate the guys, you know, showing guts and grit to, to finish it. You told us this week you wanted Chase Garbers, your quarterback, to trust his passing yeah. game and be confident in his abilities. How did he respond to that challenge today? I thought he did an awesome job. I think he did a fantastic job. I'm really proud of Chase. Uh, he made the offense go today. It was tough sledding, running the ball against those guys. Uh, but I thought Chase did a great job. You know, one pick that he'd probably like to have back. But other than that, I thought he did a hell of a job.
Well, Coach, a Pac-12 team has not come into an SEC house and won since 2010. How does this moment propel your team back into conference play this week? Well, I think it's, they're all learning experiences. We knew these guys would have a, a, a great team, very talented and well coached. Like I said before, really proud of the way our guys competed. We just got to finish a little better. Coach, congrats. Thanks. And he talked about Garbers, a career day for his quarterback, now 10-4 and four as Cal's starter, and he really took a step forward here today. Huge step forward by Chase Garbers. Here was the pass play that got Ole Miss right on the goal line. It was Elijah Moore, again, ruled down at about the one-foot line. Yeah, the official coming in from the sideline can't see where he where he tucks the ball away in his left arm, and that arm looks like it's crossed the goal line, which would have given them the touchdown. Instead, they have to run a play, and the defense stops him up front, and then Evan Weaver cleans it up up the outside, rips the ball away, ends the football game. And let's hear from the man. Let's go back to Taylor. Yeah, guys, when you talk about a clutch defensive performance, you probably think of this guy. Evan, what did you see out here today that allowed you such success? I mean... You know, just, just my guys being able to play in front of me all day. I mean, Luke Becker did a great job, number 93. Uh, the young guy stepped up on the outside. DBs played great. And, I mean, they're just a decent football team. That's it. And, you know, they're from the SEC. They think they can bring it to everybody. But, you know what? We showed up. We woke up at 3 a.m. our time this morning. We could have played at 1 a.m., 4 a.m., 11 p.m., Bears and 4. That's all I'm saying. I'm pumped up now. I feel like I could play football. Now, this defense dealt with some adversity heading into this week. You guys were down four linebackers. Man. How did this group rally and get this win? Man, I mean, you know, we just have that next man up mentality. I mean, we just really love being out here. We love everybody. We know we know what our play calls and sure we're going to mess up sometimes or to come back and hit you in the mouth. And what we do is we bring pain to teams on the offense side of the ball and on the defense. That's what you expect when you play us. Now, you already mentioned what it means to come into an SEC house and walk away with the win. As you get ready for Arizona State this week, what's the approach? Man, I mean, you know, just focus. Uh, we can celebrate on the plane, get back, watch some film, get home around 9 p.m. tonight, go to the stadium, go uh, start up on ASU and see if we can uh, keep this thing rolling. And congrats. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Go Bears. How about that? They could have played at 1 a.m. according to that. Man. What a confident guy. And he made the biggest play of the day on the last play. And this Cal defense has now held 11 straight opponents under 24 points. It's remarkable. And to keep that streak alive, they had to do exactly what you said and stop them on the final play. Well done, Justin Wilcox. The Cal Bears traveling across the country to make a huge statement for the Pac-12 conference. And so now Cal, with their record still perfect at 4-0, will take on the Arizona State Sun Devils, also undefeated right now. They're going to take on Colorado tonight. That will be good on Friday night. As for Ole Miss, they're going to have to regroup. They're now 2-2, two and two, and they go to Bama next week to start SEC play. Boom. And it's going to get real tough from here on out for Ole Miss. So for Ryan Leaf and Taylor Davis, I'm Clay Mantic. We're going to say so long from Oxford, Mississippi. Coming up next, ESPN goal line. Here again is the last play at the goal line, and it's Evan Weaver with his 22nd and biggest tackle of the day, keeping Plumley out of the end zone and giving the win to the Cal Bears.